What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about the best settings for Starfield. Before I get into all the details, be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you consider subscribing. Now, when it comes to gameplay, these are going to be personal preference. Uh, what difficulty you want to play on or difficulty you want to play on, uh, the saves, uh, that's going to kind of all be up to you, but those are going to be personal preference, but that's kind of what I'm using for that. Now, when it comes to display, uh, I'm playing, of course, on PC here. So, borderless full screen is on. Of course, your window size is going to be pretty much determined by what kind of you know, device you're playing on, whether it be a TV or a monitor. Um, when it comes to dynamic resolution, I have that on. The render resolution scale, I have set to 75%. And when it comes to my graphic settings, uh, I run a 3060. I have 16 gigs of RAM and a 12th Gen i7. So that kind of gives you an idea of what I'm running compared to maybe what you're using. You may have something better or worse than that. So you may have to customize these a bit more. I was running everything on Ultra just to see what it looks like. It did look really good, but of course, was not getting the best frames in game. These settings right here seem to give me the best frames and of course the best look that I have found so far. These may change in the future, so I'll make a separate video for that. Of course, my graphic preset will be custom because I'm gonna have shadow quality, on medium, indirect lighting on high, reflections on medium, uh, particle quality on low, uh, the lighting on medium here, the crowd density on medium, the motion blur is going to be off, the GTAO quality is medium, the grass quality is high, uh, the contact shadows is medium, V-Sync is on, and my upscaling is the FSR2. Sharpening I have at 70%. The VRS I have on and the film grain, in, uh, film grain intensity, excuse me, I have turned all the way off. I'm not a big fan of film grain or motion blur. Some people like it for immersion. You may prefer one of those to be on uh, or both of those to be on. That'll definitely be a personal preference out of that. But when it comes to everything else here, this works really well. Now, one thing I will say is if you want a little bit better graphics quality than I'm running right here, you can bump up the crowd density and maybe something like the grass quality even up more and some of the shadow quality. You could run all of those on high to ultra and it will get you a little bit more uh, of a look to the game still without suffering too much when it comes to frames. But personally for me, I keep really good frames while playing and the game still looks really good for what it is. You know, it's not gonna be the best graphical game we've ever seen considering the size of everything, but the graphics are still nice. And I think personally, like I said, for me, this works really well for graphics and for playability. Now, when it comes to the controls, I am running uh, the game with my Xbox controller. I play with the Xbox controller, I play with the PS5 controller, but I'm using the, my Xbox Series S controller for this. So if you're using you know, something like a mouse and keyboard, this may not help you out much, but I really do like uh, the controller for this. So my look sensitivity uh, for vertical is 60, same for horizontal. My aim sensitivity, vertical and horizontal are also 60. So all of these are gonna be at 60. My controller look sensitivity is at 30%. My controller cursor sensitivity is at 25%. And then of course, my mouse sensitivity. I have messed around a little bit playing with keyboard and mouse. I have that at 60. You may want to run that a bit higher. The ship reticle, uh, reticle sensitivity is 65. I have my vibration off. And I have my controller hot swap on. When it comes to the outpost item rotation speed, that is at 5.0. All of this right here is left at default. So you can kind of just you know bump those up depending on how you want to the game to move around when you're you know at your outpost maybe moving things around building but i kind of felt like they work pretty well kind of what they're on uh kind of from default when it comes to my controller bindings now i did change some things here because personally i'm not a big fan of how it was set up i like to shoot with the bumpers so rb and lb that's definitely personal preference so you can use those as the back triggers or the top triggers but i have my primary attack to the right bumper the secondary attack to the left bumper my melee to uh, rt which of course is going to be your back right trigger my throw grenade is going to be the left back trigger active is going to be y reload or sheath weapon uh, weapon is going to be uh of course your x button here on the uh, Xbox controller. If you're on the PlayStation controller, of course, that would be square. When it comes to power, that's going to be LB, RB, hand scanner, or the flashlight. I put that onto the right thumbstick, so you can just click that in and out. Of course, the select menu 
and the POV menu here are going to be those, uh, you know, your start button and your kind of just your options button on your controller. Jump is going to be A. By default, jump is Y, and it feels really, really weird to me. And if you're a fan of any other shooter out there, jump is usually always on A. So A or X on the PlayStation controller. Uh, so that feels a lot better for me. Sprint, of course, is LS. So that's going to be the left stick. Sneak is going to be uh, B. And I did not touch anything else here. So these quick keys up and down are all the same. When it comes to spaceship flight, some of these are, you know, you may want to tinker with just for this reason. Because when you go, when you run these settings, like if you did, like I just showed here. So if you have these exact same settings, if you did the same thing I was showing, you're going to have some controller binding conflicts. And it's usually within the spaceship flight or down here, uh, we'll kind of go down to the uh, docking, grounding, that kind of thing. Some of these things may be off a bit, may not act as intended. But for me personally, the only way that I really could get uh, the controllers on the gamepad to work or on your you know controller to work correctly was kind of the way i have it set up here any other way i tried to do this if i tried to put active on like the left trigger it really did not seem to work right when i wanted to travel from planet to planet i was still having to use my mouse and keyboard to travel from area to area or to you know go to the landing zone so active worked the best for why but like i said it's going to tell you the conflict uh or some of the controls or binding uh, the control bindings, excuse me, conflicts were found. That's not going to re really necessarily be a problem with the way I have this set up. I haven't really came across any issue. Now, when it comes to audio, I'm pretty much just running this all on default. Of course, I play with my Astro headset. Uh, I have the Astro, uh, the newer Astro uh, headset. That's the wireless headset. So I'm using, you know, just it on my PC. Depending on what kind of headset you're using or if you're not, uh, using a headset you're playing with speakers you may want to change this a bit the only thing i did adjust here was the music i bumped it down to 50 percent because it was really loud and at 50 it still sounds good but it's not just kind of overpowering in my opinion anyway that's my best settings for starfield here on pc with a controller of course if you like the video hit the like if you have not subscribed yet please do so and i'll catch you next time peace